Hey, boys and girls of all ages, let's see if we can make some extruded looking text. So I'm going to hit the text tool like any good text maker does. And unfortunately, due to my naivete, I have to do this one letter at a time, but it's pretty simple, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to start with the C. I'm going to get a font that I found at the font. You can't fight the font, so might as well go ahead and go with it. It is... Hiroku, Hir, Hir, Hiroko, and um, pretty interesting font. It has some interesting diagonals on some of these capital letters, and um, hopefully that doesn't cause too much trouble. And I'm gonna select this and center it because centered text is one of my favorite types of text. And I'm gonna select the pivot by double clicking and you actually double and you hold on the second click and then you hold on shift and you drag this and now it's in the center and I'll right click zoom to fit and this one I will select it and if I don't hold on shift it's unconstrained scaling and this is um, I wish it was holding down shift to make unconstrained scaling and not holding down shift to do constrained scaling if that makes sense to anybody but that's life in the uh, in the past lane for you and we're just going to deal with that but uh, we got a big letter so let's call it our big letter and i will copy this i wonder if i can hold on alt and drag no okay so and i want to control c control v and now i've got big letter and i've got a small letter although it doesn't look small just yet I promise you I'm not a liar okay so now we've got a small letter and a big letter and um, what I've got is um, I've got kind of the default fonts and then I added one so if you want it swatches I got fonts on the brain here and uh, if you want to adjust your swatches you just pick a color and then you drag down here in futility okay so now yeah i got a, a swatch and if i if i don't like that or if i want to change that to a different color i can second time is the charm i guess and then if i don't want that i could right click go to delete right click delete and uh, okay so and it's a good idea to um Select your, your swatches before you get started. Don't copy and paste the hex value from here. I've tried to do that and it um, crashed my computer, crashed my software every time. So, okay, so let's get to the exciting part. And we'll call this, um, we'll look up a hull. So when we start searching for a hull, we get this convex hull thing here. And I could press enter to accept that or double click if I really want it to work and I'm gonna drag this down below everything else so we need to put stuff in here and I will double click on it actually alt double click for clarity and now we need to put stuff in this input shapes so I'll drag my big letter and you'll see that doesn't look too good but we'll drag this one in here and still doesn't look good but at least we kind of see whoops I don't want to move that let's leave that let's move this one so you kind of see what the effect is now and that's kind of fun and let's undo that so the big letter let's make it I'll double click on it go to its fill click on the fill let's make this red let's make the um, the hull double click on that okay it's open already so I'll click on its fill I'll make this that uh, that yellow. All right, so you have to. This throws me off every time, but you have to um, know what you're doing first of all, and be in the right spot and click. Okay, so it's there. All right, and uh, the bottom one doesn't really matter. We can um, make it the layer invisible, or we can alt double click and go to its fill and make it that same yellow color. Okay, so 
that's pretty interesting. And, and um, you know, if you like solid colors, you're pretty much done and, and you can just make repeat these steps over and over. Um, what I'm gonna do is try and make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, to do that, I'll double click on the big, well, I'll select the big letter and then I'll click on the uh, outline. I like my outlines to be behind my letters. And now I can make the width bigger. And let's give it that bright yellow color. So we need to make sure we're on outline, find its fill, click on that, click on that. Okay. And um, all right, so the, um, the last thing I think I'll do is throw a gradient on here to add a little depth. So I wanna select the hole, I'll double click on it actually and go to its fill and inside we have the shader area where we can right click and we can add uh, a gradient. It's very convenient, so let's click on that. And I could go with this sideways gradient or if I double click on the gradient and uh, let's say rotation, set it to 90. All right, let's try to change some of the blend modes. So I'll select my blend modes and then use the down arrow on the keyboard to see if we get any interesting results. That's kind of interesting, but maybe inverted from what I was looking for. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go to one of those first ones that I saw that were interesting, but inverted. Yeah, this one here, and I'm just gonna swap these. Put this one over here, put this one over here. And um, yeah, th that looks pretty good. I could hide the C, but I, I wanna be able to select it. Now, if I, if I see it, I can click on it. If I hide it, I cannot click on it anymore. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, at least for now, I'm gonna show it and I'm going to double click on it, go to its, one thing to remember is um, if you don't wanna worry about double clicking every time, or I mean alt double clicking, you could always remember whatever you double click, it's gonna be at the top of your attribute editor. So you, you don't have to worry about double clicking or having to close things all the time. Okay, so now, yeah, I could still select this letter, but I it's blending into the background. So that is perfect. Now we've done all this hard work. Let's group this together, selecting all, select the bottom one, shift select the top, just like you do in every other program, and right click and go to group selected, and this group we'll call C and we can collapse this. So now I wanna double click my group and move it over on the X. And then I will copy this. So I see my C and I press Command C and then Command V and then my C is double and I could take this second one. Let's just call it, well, Let's just move it so we can see more clearly what we're doing. And I wanna move the entire group. So I'm gonna move the entire group over here. And that's okay if there's some overlap. All right, so now this second one, we'll call it A. And then if we call it A, we don't wanna make ourselves liars. So we need to make it an A. And I'll worry about the placement a little bit later. For now, I'll just worry about the letters. So I'm gonna do the same thing, copy paste, and this one will be a V. Again, I wanna see what I'm doing a little bit more clearly. And uh, select it, press enter, V, and then find this, double click on it. Okay, so and I'll collapse that. I'll double click on the group again and move it over. And uh, we have one A, so I could just select this one, 
copy paste it's already at the top of the list so that's good might be good might be bad just want to make sure it got that double clicked on there and um, we're getting there copy paste L let's double click this let's move that whole group and make it an L and I'm sure you're already quite tired of seeing me do these same things over and over again but uh, we're almost there kind of running out of space but we can always move stuff later and We've got an R to take care of. Oops, don't double click. Hit enter to change the name. Enter to accept. And then, yeah, I'm even getting tired of seeing myself do this over and over. All right, one more. Copy, paste. Why am I doing this? You might be asking yourself, but we're almost done. Just need to change this. And you'll notice I'm not, I'm not changing the bottom. I'm leaving these all as C's uh, because you wouldn't even really be able to tell the difference if it was a different letter. But uh, I can now start moving these into place a little bit nicer. I could even have these overlap. If, if these were actually merged into one shape, that would look really nice. There's an issue with the V. You can see it's sticking out, so I need to select the, the outline. Double click that. Actually, let's all double click so we could clear out some of that mess in there. So the outline is probably a miter thing. We got the miter touch, and now it's gone. So we'll take the A, move that. The L, let's move that, not that, not the outline. And you can see as we move these, we are affecting the gradient. So that's something to look out for. And um, I didn't want to move the pivot point. I just, Okay, you know what, I'll leave that pivot point. I don't think it's gonna do much harm. And I'm just kind of guessing. You could see the C's are starting to show up because we are affecting the gradient. Possibly for the worse, but. Okay, so now you can see we got some issues. The L should be below the A, the second A. And uh, the second A should be called second A, or else it'll just be a mess. Let me make sure that's the right one. Yeah, that's the second A. So the second A really should be on top of everything. And uh, I'll take the L, I'll put that below that. I'll take the R, put it below the L, and the Y below the R. And now it's looking a little bit better but we got an issue with this, the hull coming around this part of the L. So I'm just gonna pop that out if it lets me. Drag this out of here and put it just below everything. Okay, so that works out pretty well. Now all of these C's, um, it would be nice if I selected this and then it highlighted the uh, correct layer but I'm just gonna need to go into all of these and turn off the visibility on the small letters because now I don't really need to move them around anymore. So they can be disappeared into thin air. I don't know why the air for disappearing needs to be thin. Like if I disappeared into thick air, as a magician, would my audience be uh, disappointed? I don't know, but you probably realize I'm just babbling 
to uh, kill time and uh, I did it. So time killed and all right. So like I mentioned, I think it's kind of interesting the, the gradient effect, how it's not quite the same for each one, but each one of these does have its own gradient. So if I wanted to, I could come in here, find the Y, find the Y in life. That's my new Oprah bestseller. And um, so this gradient is in the hull, so I'll expand that. So we got fire in the hull, and we will change our either our scale or our offset. Let's let's see. So I could bring this up. I'll go find the R, expand its hull, double click its gradient, and um, we can adjust that. And then uh, we'll go to the L and the L. Oh, we pop this out so it's down here. So I'll double click that and adjust that scale. All right, so now it's a little bit more consistent, um, but this is pretty much what we're looking for. Let's get a closer look if we can. Uh, that, that might be about as close as we're gonna get. So this is the effect of using the hull, the convex hull to kind of give a pseudo extruded look.